Hi there today. It is Sunday. It's like 9, 10 a.m. Something like that. I woke up at 4.45 a.m. Fell back asleep a little bit. Kind of just didn't do much. Just kind of lazed around a little bit this morning. And then I thought, well, considering it's already so dark and stormy out, if I'm going to record anything and have decent lighting, I uh, maybe should do it now. And then I was thinking, well, I know that I have the day off, and I know yesterday I left my makeup on, the look that I did, but I know today that I want to play. And so I was thinking, how can I do my makeup? How can I do this makeup look for you and still do the rest of my makeup? So I decided um, I'll do my makeup, my eye look, and all I did was uh, put something on my lips, which is the uh, Ensley Rain plumping lip oil it's it looks like it's like black with sparkles in it in the tube but then when you put it on it's more like purpley a very 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 light sensation these are normally $13 like I said this one oh I don't think I said this one was from the underland collection and you can buy the trio sold out really fast but uh you can buy each one separately and it's only one extra dollar to just buy them separately and they're all still available that way also if you don't want all three of them you can pick and choose what you do want um i would have taken the trio but like i said the the trio was 38 which is sold out but it's only 39 to buy each of them um and then if you use a discount by the way if you are shopping with ensley rain and you have never used the discount so this one is offered from ensley rain themselves and you can use it one time and it is your welcome discount to their site and it is welcome w-e-l-c-o-m-e one five welcome 15 and that will save you 15 percent um so maybe if you're shopping for black friday i don't know if you're gonna be able to combine that but um if you don't have to put any other discount code in like if like if it's just on the website if you don't have to put a code in to get the discount then you should be able to stack it. Some people will let you, some people won't, but they probably do. I didn't know, so I haven't used mine, so I'm going to use it when I get my last palette. Um, so then I just did my eyebrows a little bit. I tried this product. It wasn't like a retry of 2023, but I still hate it. I still hate it, but I have found something that it will work for, and I'll talk about that in a later video, but I'm speaking of now, so many people love this. This is that lock on liner and brow cream, but I thought I would try it again since I got my angled liner brush that is so teeny, teeny, tiny because I wanted like brush hair strokes, you know, just teeny, tiny hair like strokes. It still just will not make them. It's too thick. I don't like it. And I'm so used to the pens. So I just, I mean, maybe if I'm trying to fill them in, I guess I could, I just don't like it. And plus it's the wrong color. It's a light brown and I needed at least the medium or an ash brown. I can't use those uh, burnet, those uh, golden brown colors because those cocoa brown colors because they make it look way too um, warm. But we are doing a look with the Flutter palette by Inslee Rain today. Here it is. Oh, first, um, one of the reasons why I want to do my makeup and then redo it and I didn't want to have the rest of my face done is because I want to play and try some different things today. So I don't know how I want my face base to be. Um, and plus if I'm trying different things today, um, I might be tying, trying different like tips and tricks and things like that, especially for future videos for you guys. So I also BYOP'd last night, Basic Witch. Because since I basically have been cut down to two days of work, so I went from working full time, you guys, to working two days a week to now not knowing when I'm going to work at all. Like we knew this was going to happen, but here is a uh, basic witch. And um, I actually was able to nail some of the shades and thank goodness to Flutter and Flourish because they were what made it happen. I've got three from Adept in here. I've got two from Fantasy Cosmetica Harvest of Souls. I've got one from Unity. I've got... Uh, one from Cyborg Choir, two from Cyborg Choir. I've got from Unearthly Cosmetics, I've got from the Sleepover palette. What is this called? Sleepover, I think. Yeah, Sleepover. Um, that's for that like black cat shade. 
and it's like that plummy purple, that really deep one. And then I have from, uh, I have stem from, uh, Starving Milkshake. And then, um, this is the one from Cyborg Choir. It's a cybernetic spark. It's an exact dupe. And then I have from, uh, Fantasy Cosmetica, uh, I don't even remember what it's called. And then I have Golden Hour from Flutter, which I actually need to put back in Flutter while I use it today. So I'll put that back real quick. But yeah, this is the same shade as uh, that bottom shade. It's called either like Hocus Pocus or uh, Incantation or something. Um, but anyway, yeah, that ended up, but it's called Golden Hour in Flutter. So I'll put that back in while I use this one. Anyway, um, I don't need to go through all of those. Um, I'm going to be doing a video showing all of these. And, um, so today I'm going to also use it and then I'm going to check it against colors that other people have done to see if I need to fix any of my shades in here. And another thing I'm going to be doing is I'm actually going to pull, I'm going to put two of those shades away after I get the pictures because I'm actually going to pull my haunted palette because two of my shades are like exact in the haunted palette for basic witch. So anyway, here is flutter. I don't even know what I'm going to do. God, I've already primed my eyes and I pulled out my elf I uh, lock it down eye primer. This one's only seven dollars. Definitely, as you can see, not nearly as vibrant as the other one that I use. But I need that other one for specifically for when I need vibrant looks. And since a uh, flutter is a little bit more toned down, I figured I could just go ahead with a different eye primer today. I have many, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I like to also just kind of bounce around in them all. They're all different for different types, so. What do I want to do? Oh, that's right. Okay, so I wanted to use Serenity here and Wisp for sure. And I think Magic Moss and Golden Hour. Why don't I just start there? Oh yeah, and Moonflower. And then I wanted to use Moonflower. Or do I want to put Pixie Petal? And what kind of eye look do I want to do? Do I want to do... No, okay. So I'm definitely not going to do a halo eye. So then I should be able to just grab a brush and start. Okay. All right. Ooh, I wonder if I could use this palette because I can look down and I'll have my shades in my hand. Let's try this and see if I can keep it out of my face. I probably won't. You guys know me. Mm, what kind of brush do I want to go in with? I've been really liking the brush choices I've been making. They've been really good. Ooh, that's a good one right there. Take that one. That one's clean. Yeah, that one's completely clean. Now, let me see here. Just really quickly, let me make sure. So, by the way, I need to know if the lighting is any better because um, I heard Angie Nequist <laughs> doing a video with, I think it was the one that she just did with Rachel Palmieri and Rachel loaded it onto her channel and they were talking in the video and she said, yeah, since the days of back in the YouTube days when we used to put up the mirror and let the light reflect in it. And you guys know how bad my lighting is, right? So I've got two mirrors bouncing off the same light and I keep getting blinded. So I'm hoping it's a lot more true to color for you right now. And I'm also like right in front of the camera too, but I hope this is starting to be better. I'm really trying to make a really conscious effort to improve the things that, and you know, I don't, it wasn't because someone said, oh yeah, you're going to be a good YouTuber one day. Um, because I don't, that's not like my goal or whatever, but I do want to be putting out content that's worth watching. So I do care about that. And it's not about like the topic. Well, I mean, it, it's everything. And, and a lot of it is like just the quality of the video. You don't want to watch a tutorial if you can't see what they're doing. Like I can't title it a tutorial if you guys can't see the steps of what I'm doing to get there. So I'm just trying to be conscious of that. So, and I've already done a swatch video of this if you would like to check that out. Should I just do like green and then purple on top? I kind of wanted the I don't want that yellow right there. I know. I got an idea. I'll use a different color. Try to keep this out of my face. Okay. 
Let's see here. So I just kind of went in twice. This is, by the way, just a little shader brush from um, <laughs> Bare Minerals. <laughs> and it's a real hair brush. I don't know. Um, I didn't pay attention to that kind of stuff in my 20s. This is a contour shadow brush. And now I'm going to go, okay, so that was Serenity. And now, and there is some kick up in Serenity. Now I'm going to go into the shade Flicker right here. By the way, in Flourish, that lime green color has a ton of kick up. And it also has that like really gritty feeling, like some reds. And uh, there's also a bit of kick up in uh, Flicker as well, quite a bit. I've noticed quite a bit, but I'm sure it has to do with uh, formulating these tones that they did. I'm not going to take too much of that gray yet because I'm going to be using it more for the blend out, but I'm just kind of putting a little bit of it down to like keep my shape on track. So I don't like, so now when I go into the purple, I don't go beyond that area. Maybe I should use one other brush. Let me see. I don't know if this is going to be too big. This is also a bare essentials and it's just an eye defining. And now I'm going into Wisp, and I've got Kick Up. I got to reuse it right here, Wisp. This is purple color. You know, when I didn't know enough about makeup a long time ago, quite a bit of Kick Up and Wisp as well. They're the powdery kind, though. They kind of remind me of the darker shades in the Groovy Garden when they had Kick Up in them. No, I used to think you held this brush the other direction, and I never understood why. It looked so weird but it, it does a good job at defining this little area. Remember, this is the first time I'm working with these shades in this palette. So I like to start slow and build my way up so I can really see. And you know what? It's just, I have to just be so careful with that. I can't do that. I'd rather have the teeny mirror. I'm not a palette mirror girl, to be honest with you. I could care less if there's a mirror in it. I'm just actually more frustrated that I have to put more stuff in the landfill one day. I don't usually count on the mirror in a palette. This, let me try a different brush with this shade. This isn't really blending out very well, and I'm really surprised for an Ensley Rain color. I'm going to grab my uh, Blend Bunny B5. I don't know if it's because I haven't worked with those brushes in so long, but I mean, I've been using shader brushes again for quite a while. Um, let me see if it has to do with the brush. I don't know if they wanted this shade to be like incredibly buildable, but it's, and that looks a lot better. Doesn't it? That looks better. Okay. Maybe it was that brush because I was kind of trying to get into a small area. All right. So now I'm going to grab just, itty bitty bits of this to kind of, I have a scar right here. And if I go too deep, um, it will get patchy where my scar is. So I have to like blend into my scar. It literally takes me twice as long to blend on this side because of that eyebrow scar than it does on this side because it's not, doesn't have a scar. And that's also why I always do this eye first because this eye could end up looking different. So however this one turns out, I have to match this eye up to it. So I always start with my right eye. And I've had that scar since I was like barely two years old. So I've had it my entire life. I've always had to, uh, work around it. Um, and you can see even how there's this little white, I don't know if you can even catch it on camera here. Yeah, right in here, you can see like the little bits of the scar will pop through. And I have to blend into all that here. And in fact, usually I like to use a brush like this to lay some color down here, actually, because it just fits in this area better for me. There we go. And it gets into my scar really well. 
There we go. And that, you know, that, that problem, you know, I don't expect this to happen to you guys because unless you have a scar there, I also have this mole on this same side too. And that mole is right where my liner for winged liner goes. So I have to do this. I usually, it, it's funny though, because I start with this side to get the line right, because otherwise I try to work around my mole and usually I have to go right through my mole if I'm wearing liner. So I do my liner on this side first, otherwise I won't do my liner right. I try to work around it otherwise and I don't want to have to work around it okay yeah this brush is denser and laid it down okay so now I'm just gonna take um that first brush that I was using the one that's not the definer but the contour this one just the shader and I'm gonna go into that gray shade flicker now and um just grabbing a little bit of that and I'm just gonna Kind of blend the purple out with it, but not too much up closer. Maybe just like here on and over. Just grabbing little bits of it at a time. And then I was considering just taking a smidge of it right here where that little strip of color I had was because this kind of leans green, this gray has like a green undertone to it. It's really pretty. Kind of Beetlejuice vibes. I didn't even think about that. And then I just need and green and purple will make brown. They are opposites. So you do not want to mix them. And this purple is way stronger than this green. Um, so I do not want to mix these two colors at all. I will make brown um, because this is such a light green. This, uh, what will happen is, is it will just look like a lighter shade of purple brown on my eye if I mixed these together. So I do, I want to keep them, work with them completely separate. It was probably smart of me to lay down that gray right in that center, actually, rather than trying to blend them together. Because it kept them more separate. In fact, I think I'm going to reinforce that real quick with just a tiny bit more of this gray. I think that was a really wise move. Yeah, there's a lot more kick up in these two little palettes than usually. Yeah, that's going to like, yeah, I like that actually. I think that looks good too. All right, now back into Wisp. just to kind of blend right where those are and then we can move on to the other eye okay i'm gonna pause i'm gonna catch up the other eye and i'll be right back so you guys don't have to sit here and watch that okay be right back okay so i'm back and um before we do the shimmers i want to talk to you a little bit about the mats so um and in fact i'm gonna grab flourish as well right now because um, i'm gonna have to speak on both of them <clears throat> now, if you have watched my reviews, I have never needed to stop in the middle of an Ensley Rain palette review, especially in the middle of a first look. And um, especially after Kiss How Flutter and Flourish, are, you know, are from like the same collection. So um, I want to, and, and so this is very surprising. This is very surprising to me, but I don't think it's Ensley, Ensley Rain's fault at all. It's the colors that they're choosing to make in these. Um, I don't have a lot of experience with a ton, I have to grab this one so you guys know, um, experience with a lot of the formulas on the market now because I didn't wear makeup for eight years. I've only been wearing makeup again for the last two years and I've been growing my collection. I bought, I had 25 palettes in my collection before I, I bought 40 this year at least. Okay. So I bought 40. I had like 25 from the year before. In everything that I have purchased from Ensley Rain, I have never in any of the uh, 10 palettes that I have at home so far have um, 
had any issue or difficulty using any of the shades or creating any of my looks. Now, as far as Flourish goes, Flourish was the first palette, I don't want to blind you, that I was really surprised um, of the amount of kick up in the shades. And I want you to know that, a, and a, first of all, None of this has to do with the special shades. I am speaking only of the mattes in both of these palettes. The, sh the shimmer special shades are just like they normally are. But the mattes and flourish, first of all, Petal Pop right here has an extreme amount of kick up. Do not dig your brush into it. You are going to be left with a huge amount left over. And if you dig into it, I could see you possibly, and if you're not gentle with your palettes, we all have a different relationship with our palettes. We all use them differently. We store them differently. We treat them differently. Um, and so for me, I will not be digging my brush into this shade at all. Okay, so these are this is the things that I'm going to be doing. Because otherwise, I know for me, I know how much I love a shade like this, and I know I'm going to pan the crap out of it really fast if I'm digging my brush into it. Um, so I want you to know, and plus, you're going to pick up a ton when you use it. Let me grab kind of a fluffy brush and show you here. Um, so here's like a pretty basic shader brush here. But um, the first time that I used this, I had a, which brush was it that I had? This is really important that you know this information. I had this brush right here yesterday, last, uh, yesterday. Very thin, it's a shader brush, but it's much smaller. And because it's so small and flat, I had taken this brush yesterday and I just really went into it and then I just pushed really, you know, pretty firmly back and forth. And generally, now all I'm doing with the colors in all the shades in both of these palettes, I'm literally just taking generally a shader brush is probably going to work the best because of the amount of kick up, but I'm just tapping on it like so. You're going to pick up plenty. Don't dig your hands and don't dig your brushes into it. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to destroy the shades. Um, this one feels extremely grainy. I don't know if you've had like the Spectrum palette by Profusion um, or if you're experienced in knowing what like some reds when they feel kind of like grainy or purples that maybe or even blues that kind of feel like they're like grainy. What it is really to me is it feels like little itty teeny teeny like it ball. It's like a little ball because they feel so grainy but it's just like little bits of it that feel like little collected balls and then they just smooth right out when you're using your brush they just smooth right out and I don't know what it is in the formulation of them but I've never come across that in a uh in a neon before but I want to let you know I've never had good neons in my collection before so maybe this is just news to me so I'm noticing and it, but even in Caligna here there's still a lot a lot of kick up uh, it's similar to the, the deeper shades in Groovy Garden I noticed some of the shades in Groovy Garden mainly a lot of the deeper ones had quite a bit of kick up as well it's all just going to be how you uh how you handle the shades um I had to build up quite a bit um this one went on pretty well. Uh, I, I did have to build this one up quite a bit as well. This one had quite a bit of kick up this, you know, so just beware of that. Um, now let me move on to flutter. Um, and that was really the only one that really feels grainy, but just don't be surprised. It's, there's nothing wrong with it. I've, I've experienced that numerous times in numerous palettes. It, it, it's just a formulation thing. It, it's not wrong or making it like bad. Okay. So that's, it's normal. As far as Flutter goes now, I know that like when we have a palette that is just like super fun to work with and I'm not talking about like the color story being fun to work with. Um, when I was saying like Cosmic Dreamer was like a dream to work with like formulation wise, Flutter was just a nightmare to work with, honestly. And, and I have to be honest in my review. I can't like hold things back and say, oh, Ensley Rain, I love it. It's great. No, I, if, I'm, if I'm not telling you these things, you're not going to know. And then you're, you're not going to know to handle the shades differently. Um, now, it's not that they're not pigmented. So I did have to take quite a bit to get this one built up. Of course, I knew from Flourish that I needed to be gentle with the shades. So again, I noticed when I was using these, tons of kick up again today. So tons of kick up in these two. Go in gently with your brush. These ones are, are building up easier. Um, I have not used this one yet. I, I, I did, I just put like the tiniest dab right here, but I'm actually going to go, I think I'm going to put this in the inner corner. Um, 
but again, shimmers, special shades, just fine. Um, now I haven't worked with all of them in here yet, but, um, I did work with this one, this one, this one, this one, and this, one, this one, and more kick up than usual in all of them. So just literally all you need to do, here's the other side. Here's the purple. I'm not pressing hard. I'm just touching it to it. I'm literally just touching it to it. And I'm picking up plenty of shadow, okay? Otherwise, you're going to end up with a mess and a ton of waste. And they're really special shades. That's something that I can definitely say. They're very beautiful. They're very unique. And I, I personally really like to take care of them. So I, you know, I also treat palettes different from each other. And I know that I just, I'm going to have to treat this one differently. But this green shade was just a nightmare to work with, first of all. Um, it was a nightmare to work with. I, I did not enjoy, like, it wasn't that it wasn't fun. It was difficult to work with. Um, and, and if I turn around and if I mix it in over here, I'm going to make brown because this is so much stronger. By the way, all I did other than, uh, finish, uh, matching up the eyes is I went into echo down here and I tight lined around my eye. And then I took a little bit of magic moss and that's why I know that these two also had kick up and I did dip into this one for my inner corner. This is the one I usually use for the inner corner if I'm not using my one from beauty school. Let me pick it up with this one. Okay. So there's no, not really kick up at all from orchard orange. Okay. So you got no kick up from orchard orange. It's, it's, it's much firmer pressed in the pan too. So, um, but tons of kick up, Tons of kick up, kick up, kick up, kick up. Virtually no kick up right here. Um, took a lot to build up. I really am not using the Orchard Orange here. Let me, I just did it again. I just, I want you to know this stuff. Yeah, even pressing hard into this one. Um, in fact, in fact, Orchard Orange is hard to pick up. So difficult palette to work with. Oh, but putting it on, we got color. You just can't tell because I already leaned peachy, so. And I, I, I just, I want to know right now, after touching every other one, what I can expect. So you're going to actually have to almost, with a firm brush, to pick up this one, you're going to actually have to go in hard with a denser brush to be able to pick up orchard orange but you need to go very soft with like fluffier brushes and literally as i showed you you can just tap to pick up that's from flourish and this one's from this one um let me just go back to flourish real quick and see if there's anything else i needed to say about it i thought one of the other ones felt a little grainy too no no Okay. Yeah, that's it. Um, picks up really nicely too. Yeah. Um, let's see. Flourish. I bet you it's an orange thing. Here, let me just try it right now for you. I tell you. Oh yeah, that's the right one. Clean that off so I know truly. Okay. Yeah. Uh, same with flourish. Really hard to pick up in the pan. Begonia picks up pretty nicely. Okay. So, very soft, soft, different texture. It's just a formula. Um, you know, so kick up, kick up. I noticed some kick up in that one, but I was being careful at that point. Um, really hard to pick up. It picks up and it's nice and vibrant and some kick up. So, um, I just want you to be aware of it. So... And now I'm just going to do the special shades and I'm not doing like a glitter primer right now or anything like that, but, and all I did was use those few. Now I really want to wear golden hour with this. I'll pick it up with my ring finger because I have a feeling this one picks up a lot. So I'm just going to go in just real lightly. I've never had to stop a review in the middle of like using a palette and talk about it. 
I mean, granted, I haven't been doing this for a very long time, but that was a first. I've never had to do that before. That was the first time I've ever had to do that. And out of every palette I own and I bought. And it's not a bad thing, okay? I just want you to be aware of it because if you know what you're doing, you can work around these kind of things. But if you didn't know it was like that or you had never, if you don't have any experience with that, I wanted to let you know this shade, um, Golden Hour, that I'm putting on right now, you do not need very much of it. In fact, it's one of those shades. A lot of it will also like just stick to you. I even had to go to another finger to try to continue putting it on, but it's probably even better applied with a brush. Let me, in fact, and see, and, and actually, I would like a glitter primer better with this. I just didn't, wasn't trying to waste it, you know. Yeah, it'll smooth out better and everything with a glitter primer. I would definitely, with Golden Hour, use a glitter primer. I don't like these because I have wrinkly eyelids. Oh my god. Okay, so yeah, the review is not over on Flutter. Okay, Flutter might be taking a longer review, you guys. And this happens sometimes with holochromes. Sometimes when you're using holochromes, they will move around. And I bet you if I had used the glitter primer, this would not have happened. But sometimes the when there's a holochrome in it, the holochromes will move inside of the shadow. And I think what happened is because this one is so emollient, it stuck to my eyelid. And now the holochromes are moving around on my eye. This is the shade golden hour right here that I'm working with. I have not had a single issue and I have used straight every shade in a few of my Inslee Rain palettes. This is the first time I have noticed anything of this sort. Like this looks like crap. I have to retry this shade now uh, with a glitter primer and applying it with a brush and maybe spraying it and because this shade is going to be finicky to work with. I can tell you that right now. Um, in fact, let's uh, use a setting spray right now and let's apply it with a setting spray on the other eye. I just grab a cheap setting spray for spraying my brush and I just happen to have gotten this like cheap elf one, so I'll use that for it. And I'm going to give it the best chance I can. I, I'm covered in this crap. Not crap, but wow. And... I'm so sorry, like, I'm not calling the product crap. It's it's the issue that I'm in because, first of all, I always use a glitter primer. So, like, this was not normal for me to not grab a glitter primer. I always use one because I also have oily eyelids. But because I have more mature and wrinkly eyelids, because this base set down so quickly, um, when I try to move it around on my eyelid, it just causes it to causes it to wrinkle see and it's not getting into those wrinkle lines so now I've got a mess going on on my eye so I'm going to try to spray this shade instead while putting it on the other eye this shade is extremely emollient and I bet you if it didn't have the holochrome in it it would not be doing this it won't even pick up on my brush here and you know I kind of wish I'd grabbed a fluffy brush I should have grabbed a fluffy brush for this too like a shader brush. I should have used um, my wet dry brush for this right here. This is what I should have picked up with here. I'll transfer it to this one. Oh my god. This shade is a disaster to work with. Yeah, this palette is a nightmare to work with. Like, at least, and especially this shade. And I love Inslee Rain. I haven't heard anybody. I've watched a lot of reviews. And I haven't heard anybody talk about anything about this palette. The way people are now, they don't care. They just want to get the product and then they review it and then they add it to their collection and they don't even use them again. It's like they just want to like have everything. I want to use my stuff. Okay, so now I've got it picked up. I'm having to be very gentle with it since it's a holochrome and it's in this thick base, so it's hard to pick up. I better give that a double spray. All right. And let's go in on the left eye now.
Um, I'm going to have to pay attention to what I'm doing right now. This is not a demonstration right now. I'm, uh, well, like, I'm trying to get this on for you. Okay, it's picking up a little bit now. It's looking way better with a setting spray. It's looking like nice and gloss. Okay. You need to spray this shade, okay? It's actually gorgeous when you spray it. Wow. Okay. You have to spray that shade. Uh, golden hour. Otherwise, you might not. I mean, I I could I could see getting like frustrated with that shade. I'm just gonna spray just the brush, and try to fix these creases now. I don't know if it really will, but I'm just gonna try to because it's like really set into the creases. I mean, it doesn't matter, I'm gonna wash my eye, but, you know, I mean, but if you ran into this problem and you were getting ready for work and you needed to fix it yourself, let's try to save the look. Okay. So, I'm actually working, like, my uh, brush is actually, like, so I'm using a wet-dry brush right now. And I've actually, it, it says right on it, wet-dry brush. Not like you don't believe me, but I could put my arm so I'm not bending it weird. It's actually like, it's actually, it's, it's meant for this. It's meant for, um, shadows that you want to get wet and because bare minerals, they have a lot of like, uh, loose shadows. And I had bought some like duochrome ones from them back in like 2000. I still have them. And, uh, I fixed that shade. Oh my God. Oh, I wish I'd showed you better like up close, but can you guys see just right now how like smooth and glossy it looks compared to how it was before? So if you see this, you just know from right now, this second shade in because of that damn holochrome in it, you're going to have to really work with that one because it's so emollient and it's on a dark, it's got like a dark base to it. And then it's emollient, and then if it's if you got creasy eyelids, and then my eyelid was really dry, this uh, Elf one really dries my eyelid too much. That's actually why I don't use it. I don't think it makes my shades vibrant enough. That's actually really beautiful now, though. Now that I got it down with this brush, it's actually really pretty now. So I'm just going to grab a teensy bit more and just go right up here because I was a little low still. There we go. Well, it looks beautiful and glistening glossy with it sprayed. So there's that. Um, but also, if you also have to work too much with this shade, um, the hollow chromes are falling out under my eye, just so you know. So it's going to make a mess. And I think one of those glitters just like went into my eye. Luckily, it's safe for the eye. But I this is what I don't like about hollow chromes. Um, the very first time, actually, the first two or three times that I used Cyber Choir, I got the holochromes in my eye and they were in my eye for hours. I literally did not use the palette again for a couple of weeks after that. And the first, it's hit or miss. Half the time I use that require, I get holochrome in my eye. So I don't use it as much as beautiful as it is because I'm probably going to get it in my eye. Okay, so just a teensy bit more here and we can finally move on. Sorry, I have to tell you guys that stuff. I, like That's the whole point of the channel. I'm going to post this today now that I know that. That's crazy. I didn't expect this to happen, but since floors went up. Um, I really want as many people. I, I hope that if anyone else out there has this palette, please pass this information on to people so that they know. Because I could see people being very frustrated and not wanting to work with it if it was this difficult to work with i could see if you don't know what to do getting frustrated and just like being like i'm not going to use it it's crap and wanting to declutter it and but thinking it was like really pretty you know so i'm just going back into now um serenity and i'm just going to clean up you know where i put the holochrome on the front here 
and I'm using that denser blend bunny brush here. It's the uh, one from the Forget Me Not, the fluffy shader brush, or not shader, but blending brush from the Forget Me Not. And I do like these two because they put down a nice amount of color quickly, really pretty. I just wasn't sure. I like to really go lightly and really slow when I begin to see how the, especially in a review, I want to really make sure and take my time and really check each shade as I'm using them to so that I can tell you otherwise what kind of review am I giving you guys a crap one. Okay, now I'm just going into a little bit of wisp so I can clean up its edge too because when I was trying to work with that shade, of course, the wrinkles got pushed and it got pushed into the purple. There we go. Kind of make it sharp there. I kind of like that actually. Okay. Again, I'm having to work with this, uh, barely even touching it and getting, uh, all, you know, the kick up, barely even touching it. And like I said, you know, kick up's not a bad thing. Um, I want you to know kick up actually means like from what I have learned, kick up means that the formula is more pure. There's less filler in it. And so that's why it does that. There's less binder in it or whatever. And I'm not talking about special shades. I'm speaking on mats. I don't, I'm, I don't formulate makeup, so I don't know, but I read about it. And what I read is that kick up means that it's more pure. So when I learned that instead of blowing off my kick up, I would just use the kick up in my pen as my next dip. I just grabbed it gently with the brush. So, all right, that's still kind of low. So I almost feel like it needs, we definitely need something for the inner corner. And I kind of feel like I should do this dewdrop color because it's nice and bright and vibrant. And I just want something like, well, ooh, that one's green here. Let's dip and look. So I was thinking of, ooh. Hmm. Actually, okay, so I think I'm gonna go with this one. <laughs> the holochromes in the other one just make me not want to use it after that disaster. And like I said, it's not... I really think it boils down to the uh, formulation of the colors, like the, the formula of them. It's not like Ansley Rain doesn't know what they're doing. Um, I think it was just a hard one to formulate. Funny, I actually had to kind of dig my thing, my brush into this one to pick some up where I have to be so gentle with the others. This I had to kind of dig my brush into to get on it. Not dig really, but just kind of, just so you know, like this is all I'm doing to my palette here. should be enough. Just really ever so gentle in it. Yeah, that was definitely a good choice. I'm glad I did that instead of the other color. I like the peachy base it's, that, that it's on. Kind of matches since I put that peachy color down. All right, and I think that's it. Mm, no, one more thing. Just up here this time. Just right here though. Ah, I just felt that fall on my face. This shifts to pink, I see. Oh, wow, that's cool looking, though. Wow. Really cool looking. Wow, this brush sure picks up. Okay, so this little fluffy brush sure picks up golden hour nicely. I just needed a tiny bit of it right in here.
There we go. Okay, I think I am finally ready for you guys. Jeez. I am going to continue to um, work with Flutter um, off camera. In fact, I think I'm going to halt any more um, tutorials with Flutter until I work with it off camera a bit. And um, I don't mind working with Flourish on camera at all, but I think that I need to spend some time working with this one to come back and give you the final review on it. So since I am in a time crunch for the end of the year, bye. It's like, I want to get let you know as soon as possible. I'll try to let you know within the next two weeks. But I mean, it's... It's not impossible to work with and it's very unique and it's very beautiful. And this palette saved me, Flutter and Flourish saved me from being able to like dupe and BYOP. Um, Basic Witch, um, the shade Golden Hour that I was just working with is actually that um, shade that is in the bottom right before the last shade in the palette. Um, that is Golden Hour. And so that and um, there was something, well, I I could use Flourish in it as well. Oh, Fairy Flutter I actually use in it because it's got the... So yeah, two of these I use in that BYOP. So that's kind of important for me. Um, but I would like to get back to you guys on that palette because um, I think I pretty much told you everything as far as like how difficult it was to work with. So um, I think I told you what I need to tell you about it. And um, that's it for now. Oh, I got to show you the final look. Duh. Duh. Sorry, I had my mind going over here. I was thinking. I've never had to do this. I've never had to like, and, and I'm not really working that hard to be completely honest with you. I'm just seeing a few things about it that need to be checked out before I can give you the final answer about it is all. So, I mean, the look is awesome. It looks really cool. I need to get over here for you. There we go. And of course I also don't have other makeup on. So, and I don't have mascara on. Um, so when I do the final, I will come back and I will still get, I'll still do looks on my channel with the palette. Um, but not until I do the review, I need to work with all of it more directly and like each shade. But I think part of the reason it looks so weird right now is because I don't have any other makeup on and the difficulty could have something to do with it. It's not bad. It's just, I'll get back to you. That color might not have been the best to use here. I kind of feel like mm -hmm. this uh, golden hour might have looked better with the uh, peachy shades in here. I kind of used an opposite. I also, it, it, it could be my lighting as well. So, okay, you guys, you have a good day and um, I will get back to you on Flutter. Like I said, Flourish is fine. It's just, it might be a surprise how some of that works a little bit, but yeah, you will hear back from me on this one. Have a good day.